Hey guys, so on this episode of Make It With Calvin, we're gonna be talking about my experiences so far with the all metal setup here on the Artillery 3D Sidewinder X2. Mind you, this is the pre-built unit that I bought directly from Artillery. Talk a little bit about the install, using it so far, and a couple of minor issues that I've ran into. Thankfully, TLDR is, they're nothing that makes it completely unusable. So, let's dive into it. Okay, so the install of this was actually very simple. All I had to do was just remove the plastic clip here, undo the two Allen screws that held this in place. It was a little tricky to reach one or two of the screws on here, but a little bit of patience, especially if you have a ball and hex driver, you can get rid of it really easily. Then just reverse the process when installing the new hot end assembly on here. Take your time with the ribbon cable, make sure that's inserted fully and double check your nozzle gap between the bed and you're all good to go. Now mind you, that does not solve the fact that the machine is still firmware limited to 260 degrees Celsius. And for most people, you're probably gonna be more than fine with that. If you're somebody like me and you actually wanted to crank the thing all the way up to 300 degrees Celsius, that's where you will run into a little bit of a problem. My problem is I had a very short time window between when I got the hot end assembly installed, time to actually try and attempt to reflash the firmware, and time to get the GoPro rigs reprinted for me and Danielle for going on the Grand Canyon trip. And I spent about two hours trying to get the firmware updated, couldn't figure it out, so I just gave up, printed them in GTX high-speed PLA on this, and they worked fine, so that's great. I'm only mentioning that just because some people have the notion that now they've dropped an all metal hot end on here, they can crank the machine up to 300 degrees Celsius, they're not gonna be firmware limited, and they're good to go. And that's not the case. Now, I will say I wish Artillery just came out with the machine with a hot end that was all metal, out of the box, period, no PTFE line garbage, but that's just personal opinion there. I rest my case. That said though, Sadly, a lot of the content out there on how to flash the machines is not up to date because as time went on, I believe they changed a board revision and that actually requires you to physically remove the bottom and install a jumper plug on the main board to put it into firmware flashing mode versus just doing it over USB. I can understand why they did this. Obviously it prevents people who don't know what they're doing from reflashing the firmware, but it also makes it harder for people who know what they're doing to reflash the firmware. So, you know, can't always win, can you? Okay, firmware stuff aside, does the hot end assembly actually work? And pretty much answer the question on that, yes it does. Now, the only material I have not attempted on this is TPU, and that is purely for time reasons. I will say that generally all metal hot ends are not as TPU friendly, especially on the really soft end of things but that doesn't mean it couldn't be done. I will probably put a pinned comment or just shoot another video on that when the time arises, but I currently don't have any TPU projects in mind, so we'll leave it at that. I'd said though, I did run a gamut of materials through this and except for the dreaded extruder arm wobble, mechanically it worked fine. And I'm not blaming the extruder arm wobble for the hot end clogging. That's a completely different story. Didn't have any problems with that, so I was good in that department. Now, what do I mean by extruder arm wobble? Well, what'll happen over time is the extruder arm will get loose, it will start to wobble back and forth, and that's a problem because the filament has a hard time staying in the groove, the extruder arm jumps off, even if it has a grooved bearing, it loses tension, your print fails, a lot of people chalk that up to a clog, they're not one and the same, but I rest my case. Now, thankfully the fix for this is relatively simple. There are numerous 3D printed shims that you can install on the side there. Thingiverse, for example, has quite a few of them. Very easy to design yourself or even make. In my case, I just took a piece of scrap wood from the laser cutter and just literally shoved it in there and said, you know what? good enough, and I was able to complete some prints with it. So that, it was crude, it was hack, it got the job done. I did also try changing out the extruder arm 
for a plastic one to see if that would fix it, but my plastic one was also somewhat worn out. So definitely a bit of a bummer, definitely something that you should keep an eye out for and artillery if you are watching this. Highly recommend that you just include a little shim right there. It's a very fast part to make and it gets the job done. So overall, that's my thoughts on this. Well, I do wish the machines out of the box just came with an all metal setup. What are we gonna do? This is a nice addition though. If you do plan on printing in PETG and hotter temperature materials a lot, it's a good idea. If all you plan on doing is PLA, TPU, and occasionally some PETG, I think you'll probably be okay sticking with the stock hot end if you don't have an extra $100 or so lying around to burn for something like this. And yes, I understand if you really wanted to, you could make your own all metal setup on this, but I know for some people that's just a bit more complicated than what they're comfortable doing, and I completely respect that. So as for me, I'm gonna get out of here. I got some more stuff I need to print. I need to figure out how to flash the firmware on this eventually. So I'll see you guys here next time on Make It With Calvin. And if you do know the proper process for how to do this, please comment down below and or shoot me a video link and or give me the instructions. I would genuinely like to know because I hate flashing firmware, but I do want to actually be able to print very hot with this machine. So I rest my case. All right, guys, I'll see you here next time on Make It With Calvin. Thank you.